Hey, so I was just reflecting and I realized that I have this crazy good story and I don't know if anyone else is interested in hearing this story, but I'm interested in telling it. So I hope somebody gets some level of enjoyment from it. Um, so this night was the first night I did, I did acid. Um, and so my friend gave it to me and I was like, okay, you know, I'm down. <laughs> I, you know, I, I already had friends who were like doing acid and like I was around it a lot. So it didn't feel like that big of a deal. And I had done other drugs at this point. So it was kind of, you know, it was whatever. So I get it, you know, I do it. It's about an hour and a half. I'm sitting in a room with my friends, Bella, Jake, um, Sawyer, and this guy, Bob. I'm not going to call him my friend because he's kind of a weirdo, but... <laughs> oh yeah, and this guy, Cedar, my, my best friend. Um, and so, we're all in this room together. There's these beautiful purple colored lights. And I realize I'm tripping because I look at the lights and I'm just like, holy fuck. Those lights are looking purple. So I start tripping and my friend Bella is like, Alice, you know, I know you have a thing for this girl, and you just need to tell her how you feel. And I'm like, you know, fuck, you know, yeah, sure, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm high as fuck, you know, I'm, I'm easily persuaded. And I, so I text her, and I'm, I, I send her this voice message, and it's saved so it's, it's I, I basically just say like, hey, you know, I have a thing for you, um, and I have for a while, and... I apologize for, <laughs> this girl had a girlfriend at the time, and um, me and her girlfriend have had, like, this absolutely cinematic level fucking, I don't know, I, I'm pretty sure she would call me her arch nemesis, like, she, this girl hates me, like, hates my guts, like, she texted my ex-girlfriend and was like, my, literally the reason my ex-girlfriend won't talk to me anymore is because of this girl, this girl, like, went into her DMs and was like saying all this shit about me that wasn't true. She was like your 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 ex-girlfriend is like ODing on coke all the time and like coming to school high as fuck. And I'm not going to deny that I've come to school high or that I've done coke, but I've never OD'd ever. So she was just telling all these, you know, mistruths, lies, etc. as a result of this. <laughs> also, Okay, this is kind of getting off track here. I'm kind of losing myself here, but there was this one time when when they were still dating and I was hanging out with this girl B, who she's the girl I confessed to. Uh, this girl B, she was at my house and her girlfriend, this chick, I'm gonna call her M, this chick M fucking comes to pick her up. And while she's picking her up, you know, she sees my mom outside and she just goes off to my mom. She's like, your kid is fucking off the rails, your kid's, you know, again, ODing on coke, fucking, f fucking, like, just an absolute mess, needs to go to rehab, like, all this shit, and, like, sh she's breaking down in tears, my mom is, like, literally just trying to fucking walk the dogs, like, she's like, I, I don't care, like, <laughs> um, it was a whole fucking thing, it literally led to, like, my mom not trusting me for, like, months. But anyway, but back to the story. So I confessed to this girl. She didn't know I was confessing. I had to like, I don't know. She's kind of the oblivious type, but I had to really hammer it in that like I had a thing for her. And she didn't, she didn't really reject me, but she wasn't like super receptive. I mean, she was in a relationship at the time, so I don't blame her, but she was basically like, it's not that I don't like you. Oh, she, she kind of said that she liked me too. That's basically where we landed. But like, it was very like kind of reluctant, but like it did seem like she had feelings for me too. So I was like kind of hyped. I was like, holy shit, this is bomb, right? So that's the first crazy thing that happened this night. You know, I fucking high five my friend Bella who told me to confess to her. I really appreciated. Oh yeah, fun fact, me and B are still together. <laughs> so, you know, food for thought, shoot your shot, get out there. To be fair, I've shot my shot with a lot of girls and most of them have not been as receptive as B was, but it's still worth shooting your shot because you could find something really special. I think I found something really special with this girl. Anyway, so 
I'm still at the house, fucking gazing at these beautiful purple lights, and, you know, I'm tripping, and it's, like, kind of hectic. There's, like, maybe six, seven people in the room, and I'm like, I need to clear my head. So I go outside. I'm, I'm on the concrete. I'm just walking. I'm just pacing back and forth on the street, and I'm like, I need somebody to talk to right now. So I fucking call B. And we just pretend like I didn't confess, or like we didn't really talk about it. I guess we didn't really pretend like I didn't say anything, but we kind of just talked. I was just kind of telling her what I was seeing, because I was tripping fucking balls. This is like the first time I did psychedelics, I think. So, I was like, I was like fucking, I was like, dude, I just fucking teleported. Like, <laughs> I was like, I was like looking up till, I, 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 apparently I saw God. I was like, I was like looking up at the street lights and God was talking to me. I don't really remember what he said. It was something like following your dreams, some bullshit like that. But I'm just walking back and forth. There's this cat that I saw. There's a lot of really good quotes from this night. A lot of really good quotes on the phone. Cause I was out there walking back and forth on the street for like an hour and a half. I was like, I was asking like, like, hey, like, why do I keep seeing that fucking, that fucking stop sign, man? Am I just walking in circles? I, I was. I was just walking back and forth. I also named this cat Yen. And I didn't realize this cat was actually real until, like, the next week when I was outside again and I saw the same cat. And I was like, holy shit, I wasn't tripping paws. This was a real cat. I named the cat Yen. Probably not its real name, but at the time it felt like... I don't know. I could just, like, spirit... Like, I, I could just hear, like, in my spirit's ear that this cat's name was Yen. So, maybe... In another life, this cat's name was Yen or something. I don't fucking know. I was just tripping balls. Anyway, so I come back inside, and my buddy Cedar is like, you know, there's this party tonight. This is a Friday night, right? So it's Friday in the summer. So I'm like, party sounds fucking rad, you know? This is this is this night's already going super well for me. I've had like an amazing night. So we hop in the car, and the party is like maybe I don't know. It's not very far away, but it's like. You know, I live in fucking the, the boonies, so it's like going anywhere is kind of a big deal. I'm kind of like closed off on either side by trees, so it's maybe a 30 minute drive, and it's on this like super windy road, and I'm tripping balls again. And my buddy Cedar, rest in peace, he's, he was like a really, really good driver, but he, he liked to scare the shit out of people who were tripping, so. Oh yeah, also for reference, before we started driving, the only three people in the car were me, Bella, and him, and he dropped a tab of acid before we left. But he knew that it was going to take, like, you know, a while to kick in, so he was good to drive because it wasn't that far. I always trust him. Um, so we start driving, and we're going, like, 80, maybe, and we get on this straightaway, and Cedar just fucking gasses it, like, going easy 120 which is like the limit that his car can go, or sorry, he wasn't going 120, he was going 118, which is the max that his car could go. So, we, you know, I was just like, I was just fucking melting into the music, I fucking became the noise, it was incredible. And I, I was looking at Bella's face, and she just, she wasn't nearly as high as me, she was like, fucking terrified, like, she thought she was gonna die. So we get to this party, and Bella just like, immediately is like, I am not going back in that car. <laughs> I was like, okay, you know, suit yourself. I would like to get back in that car. But, you know, at this point, Cedar was kind of starting to trip balls, so it was probably a good decision. Anyway, Bella tells this other guy, Elijah, that Cedar's, like, not good to drive, and Elijah takes his keys, which Cedar was not happy about because it felt like a big betrayal to him because him and Bella were, like, I, I don't think they were dating at the time, but they had had, like, a dating history, so it kind of felt like a betrayal to him or something. I'm still kind of on the- I, I still don't really care that he's because he was not good to drive. Anyway, so me and Cedar were just like kind of unhappily just sitting in his car. Bella was sleeping in Elijah's car because they- oh yeah, they were dating at the time. Right, so Cedar was already really mad at Bella because, you know, obviously she left him <laughs> um, and was now dating this guy, Elijah. Me and Elijah also have our differences of opinion. This, this kid hates my guts. Like, hates my guts. Like, literally, he'll ask people if I'm at their house, and if I am, he won't go. <laughs> like, he refuses to be near me. It's so funny. So me and Cedar are just sitting in his car, and I'm like, 
you know, I don't really want to wait here until you stop tripping, so I'm gonna try to get a ride. And he's like, yeah, of course, I don't mind. So I go outside, you know, I walk down the road a little bit because the party's really loud, and I call the only person who I knew would give me a ride. Fucking M, the girl whose who's girlfriend I just, I, I just confessed to. And M was still living with B at this point, so, so she was like, you know, do you want me to bring B? And I was like, well, you know, you can if you want, but <laughs> this is going to be an awkward enough car drive. So, so she, she ended up didn't bring her, but the excuse I made to have her pick me up, because obviously I didn't just want to ask the girl who I just confessed to, his girlfriend, the current girlfriend, that I fucking, you know, need a ride from her. That seems weird. So I had this little, you know, I, I had this guys, I had, the, the reason that I called her was because there was this girl who Cedar and I were friends with who was passed out drunk in the back of his, in the back of his car, right? So I'm like, you know, this girl has a history of alcohol poisoning and like getting way too fucked up at parties and like, I think she needs a ride. Like, I know she needs a ride because I don't want her to drive home because um, that could be dangerous. So I'm like, this girl needs a ride and also, you know, maybe I do too, <laughs> wink wink. I called her at like maybe 2.30. No, no, it was later than that. It was like 3.30. Yeah, it was 3.30 because we got there at 2.30. So she's like, okay, I'll be there, but like in the morning. So me and Cedar just spend the whole night, me with my feet up in the passenger seat of his car. We're just talking, you know. He was my best friend and we were both really high. So we just had a really nice deep chat. So the morning came, and me and Cedar were it's like outside the house, like in this little fire pit, right? There's no fire there, but we're just hanging out with some of our friends. You know, this girl that we've both known for a really long time, you know, our bestie. And this other guy who I've never met before, I think his name is like, it's, 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 it's like Brody or something? I, it's, I don't know. <laughs> just some random guy from the party. We're just, we're just chatting. I'm still kind of coming down at this point, like, I'm not seeing things anymore, I'm just like a little bit high. Nothing really happened at the party other than this redhead wanted to get with me and I was kind of like way too high to care. I pretty much just spent the whole night chatting with Cedar, as most of these nights tended to go. <laughs> so we're all waiting for a ride. Cedar's waiting for Elijah to give him his keys back. And then finally, M gets here. We all, including fucking Brody, by the way, me, Brody, and this girl that was in the back seat of Cedar's car, you know, we all get in M's car and she's like, she says to me, like, I'll, you know, I'll give you a ride, but you're gonna have to, like, talk to me first. Because we have some stuff to talk about. And I was like, that is a scary thing to say. I was like, this girl is crazy. This girl's gonna fucking murder me. I was, like, scared for my life. But I was also kind of too bad to care, you know? It, it was one of those situations where I was tweaking, but I also kind of knew that I was just tweaking because I was high. So I, I, was, I wasn't worried about it. So she drops everybody off. You know, everything's fine. And she drives me out to the headlands. She drives me out, like we can see the ocean. I'm like, this is it for me. Like, she's gonna like, shoot me. <laughs> and she, we just had this lovely chat, surprisingly. It actually ended really well. She was like, you know, I don't care that you have feelings for my girlfriend, you know? You Literally the words she said were, you can't stop love. And I'm like, yeah, man, you can't stop love. You're right, you know, this, this chick gets it, right? I go home happy, and I sleep for like 12 hours, but anyway, the aftermath of that conversation was that long line of just hatred between me and this girl. Like, this girl knew that I had feelings for her girlfriend, but she didn't know that her girlfriend also had feelings for me, and that to her was, you know, you can't stop love, but I can still get mad at my ex-girlfriend for having feelings for somebody I don't like was I guess her logic and you know it's it's funny because this chick had always been like you know if you or anybody else ever needs a ride and you know, you're in danger and you'll have a ride and you know, I don't want you to drive home intoxicated so please call me if you ever need a ride and then when I did that she ended up telling my mom <laughs> anyway that's the story um thank you for listening to it have a great day